Good morning again, everyone. So, um, okay, let's wait until the echo's gone. Okay. Um, got it? Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so today is um, the first day of this year that we have gathered together to have a Dharma talk and discussion together. And um, so um, this morning, I'm gonna talk about what might orient us um, and support us in this year. Uh, it looks like it may be a doozy. Mm -hmm. So um, having something mm -hmm. to return to and to think about and orient ourselves in our lives and as a community, um, I think it might be very helpful. So the founder of our school, Ehe Dogen, wrote a fascicle called Komyo, Radiant Light. And um, he wrote it in 1242. So it's said that he delivered this uh, talk at um, Kosho Horinji, the temple that was the first temple he founded with his community. Um, and they had been there for probably six years or so when he delivered this. And then in 1243, uh, they left that temple and went up into the mountains and founded Eheji, which is the kind of mothership of Soto Zen. Um, most people think that they left their original temple because there was a lot of hostility and um, opposition to them. So uh, there was all, also a lot going on in Japan at the time that was very stressful, dangerous. Um, so it was a hard time. It was a hard time for them as a community and for the wider community when he wrote this. So I want you to think about the quiet in the middle of the night. Dogen is addressing his community at a time of great challenge and grave difficulties. Um, like all of Dogen's teachings, this fascicle gives us a way of understanding our practice that both supports us and challenges us at the same time. There's always this like, like my teacher used to say, it's like support like this and push like this at the same time. So you have to in your practice, you need to kind of sort out what is that for me? What is the support and what is the challenge? I wanna read you um, a short section and I want you to listen to it with your whole body. I want you to listen to it with your body, your heart, your mind. And so allow this to kind of enter into your life stream and impact you. So get comfortable, you comfortable? And I'm gonna be silent for a moment and then I'm going to uh, read Dogen's words to you. One day, great teacher Yun Men addressed the assembly in the hall, saying, Every person has the radiant light without exception. Yet when you look at it, you don't see it. 
profound darkness. Dogen Senji says, what is everybody's radiant light? That's what Yun, Yunmen asked his community. What is everybody's radiant light? No response came from the audience. So he himself spoke up. The monastics hall, the Buddha hall, the kitchen pantry, the main gate. This great teacher saying, every person has the radiant light without exception, does not mean that the radiant light will appear in the future or was in the past or can be observed in the present. You should clearly hear what it says. Every person originally has the radiant light. It is, as it were, assembling hundreds of thousands of yun men's in the hall and letting them recite the saying in unison. Yun men's saying is not just his personal fabrication. It is what everybody's radiant light utters by exerting itself in concert with and for the sake of others. Every person has the radiant light without exception. This means a whole person originally has the radiant light. The radiant light is each and every person. Everyone exerts the radius radiant light in his, her, their personal environing circumstances. For this reason, the radiant light shines within everyone without exception. Each individuated light originally shines within every person. Everybody is authentically what he, she is, they are. Each individuated light is authentically what it is. Every being is just as it is, through and through. And every wholeness is just as it is, through and through. Therefore, you should know that the radiant light everyone has, without exception, pertain pertains to each and every actual human being that individual person with whom, within whom an individuated light wholly shines. Just ask Yun Men, what do you mean by every person and by the radiant light? Yun Men asked in this vein, what is everybody's radiant light? This question is none other than the radiant light itself because it challenges its subject to the hilt. Accordingly, when anyone asks in such a manner, he, she, they has their own light. There's a lot here, isn't there? <laughs> I'm gonna be talking about this for a while. But today I wanna say, Every person here, every person in your life, every person in this world has and is the radiant light without exception. And this is true not only for humans, but for all beings, all being. So you might ask yourself, what would your life be like if you lived according to this principle? What would your zazen be like if you lived according to this principle? What would your encounters with your neighbors be like if you lived according to this principle? What would your encounters with people who you really have trouble with be like? This radiant light without exception and this again is true for all beings. How would you regard yourself? How would you regard others? How would you regard your breakfast dishes, your walk or drive to work, 
the people who scare you, the people you may feel hatred for? How would this world be if we considered this deeply? Every person, every being originally has radiant light. It is not earned or developed. It simply is. <clears throat> and recall the words of Yun Men. This radiant light is what is uttered by exerting or living itself. Radiant light is the practice of everyday life. It's not apart from it. It's a function. It's not a thing. This means radiant light is not something a person sees as apart from themselves, although we may experience that. It is the seeing itself. It's both. And this is kind of like the support and the challenge. How we see and how we understand, how we see and how we understand. Radiant light. Each day, each step is alive with the possibilities of the expression of radiant light. A whole person originally, Dogen says, has radiant light and radiant light is each and every person. Everything. Every being, just as it, just as it is, through and through. Every wholeness. So this is a challenging statement, isn't it? Maybe it's easy for you, but I don't think so. Every person, me, you, every person, every being, just this messed up, sadly torn, deluded world, just this confused being, the one who gets angry, falls down, is lonely, reaches out, happy, elated, joyful, all of it. Every place, every time, every circumstance. This is true because radiant light is not an indication to escape from this world to some other place where it's all goodness and unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> what's that? What's that little toy called? Um, happy pony or something like that? I see it everywhere. You know, they're kind of pink and cute. This is not escape. Radiant light is not escape into happy pony universe. It's this, it's it's alive here in this particular world, this troubled world. To think of radiant light as, as some going to some nether region um, limits it. So it's not a promise of bliss and glory. It's greater than that. It's more subtle than that. It's more inclusive than that. Komyo is our own radiant light. It's all beings radiant light, the Buddha's radiant light, and there is no place this is not true. Um, Dogen Zenji talks about again, again. This is dim sightedness. This is what um, he Jin Kim wrote about this in this book, wonderful book. Um, dim sightedness is a quality of being human. Do you do you ever feel that way? Dim sighted. You know, we accept that we don't. It's not that we are resigned to it but we accept that's a part of our world our human humanness and so we 
grapple with. How is this dim-sidedness also radiant light? My own difficulties, how is that radiant light? This is a kind of twist that Dogen does again and again and again. We come to an understanding that makes some kind of sense, even if it's a bit hard to grasp. And then he challenges us to go deeper, to let go of our usual perspective, to dive in in a new way, in a way that is aim towards that which is not quite reachable to our usual way of thinking. We can feel it. We can feel that it's liberating, I think. We can we can relate. Something, something's here that my mind can't quite corral it into concepts. So intellectual understanding Grappling with things is super important. Not that we have to be scholars, but grappling with things with our minds is really important because it kind of gets us in the vicinity. It wakes us up. And we come to understand that intellectual understanding um, cannot fully contain the teachings that are coming towards us. We need to dive in we need to practice in our daily lives, in our meditation practice, but bring this teaching into our lives, even when we dimly understand it. In that way, our understanding takes root in our lives. It fills our body, it enlivens our life and supports kind of a sustaining wisdom a wisdom we can rely on. So if we allow the teaching to take root in this way, it begins to orient us. If we take a position of actively reaching for it, every day in our activities, we, we cultivate ways to remember. This changes us. And it changes our world. So with this posture, this orientation, we can look around and find ways and practices that support our intention to fulfill the promise of the teachings. When we do this, when we orient in this way, confidence builds. Our ability to engage, to feel joyful in the engagement and to struggle in a solid way, we get purchase, yeah. Then this gives life to ourselves and it gives life to others. So we ask, okay, this is great, but how? You know, that's our question, how? Well, okay, Zazen is important. Sit at home, sit in community, just, you know, Katagiri Roshi said, basically something like life is hard. So you have to sit down sometimes for a while. So sit down for a while, just plop yourself down somewhere for a while. Pay attention, see what happens. Don't worry about it. Just, just sit somewhere for a while. It's great if you come here and sit in community, there's something that happens in community that is really important. But I just want to advocate, just sit your butt down for a while and pay attention. Pay attention and invoke this orientation to the practice. And right now I'm going to draw on the wisdom of uh, St. Benedict. Those of you that know me know, uh, I think St. Benedict's teachings are quite remarkable, his monastic rule. So I'm necessarily adapting it. And I hope that St. Benedict and those that follow him won't, won't mind that I raid their tradition respectfully 
and say, hmm, there's a lot of wisdom there. Shall we incorporate it according to our own teachings? Uh, in particular, I want to um, beg the forgiveness of Sister Joan Chittister, who has written brilliantly on the rule of St. Benedict and hope that she understands my attempts to mine the wisdom of that tradition and um, give the gifts of it to us. So this comes from his chapter on humility. And I think if there's one thing that we need as we practice Dogen's way and live in this world, um, it's humility. Uh, to be right-sized in our world. To um, not assume we know everything and we can tell the world what's right and what's wrong, but that we listen. We know we're a part of the whole. So uh, being right-sized means that we're open and willing to grow and listen and learn and to be transformed. We're willing to be transformed. So the first step, according to this, my adaptation, is um, keep this teaching of Komyo, Radiant Light, close at all times and come to know it in any way you can. So uh, when you sit Zazen, before you sit Zazen, recall this teaching. Sit yourself down as radiant light in radiant light. Just have that thought and then let it go. Take quiet time to ponder this. Read and reflect on it. Find ways to recall it as you go about your days. Remember, we do not need to find this radiant light. It is already present. It is fully there already. We may see it. We may come to know it. We may come to know that we are it, that we express it, and then we forget. We're dim-sighted. If we um, go into the dark, sometimes we can see this more clearly. When I was at Tassajara, I took a walk one night. And the moon was completely absent. And it's very, very dark up there. And I thought, oh, now I can see starlight. I never knew what starlight was before because I'm around electric lights or the moon or something. So this can be very subtle. It can be very subtle, maybe invisible. So we engage in this way and we start to open to this teaching. And we start to see it, at least sometimes, in our own lives and in our relationships. The second step is to come to know that no matter what difficulties and challenges come into our lives, the radiant light of wisdom and compassion of the Buddhist ancestors, which is not different than our radiant light, is there to support us. Because it is us. In quiet and humility, we can return to this truth. Whether we believe it or not, in any given moment, and we can find solace in that connection and guidance. The third step is to actively tend to the practice, to bring constancy to it. When we bring constancy to it, we allow it to permeate our lives. We give dedication to our lives. We honor our lives by giving dedication and constancy to our practice of zazen. No matter how you conceive of that, please have an open mind to our relationships, to our community. We cultivate ways of living that return us to the practices that help us remember to do them. In this way, we grow into our lives with others. We become more whole, more available, 
less bounded by our grudges and our hatreds, our ideas, we grow beyond them. It doesn't mean we eradicate them and become, you know, like this um, popularized version of Zen. You know that one? <laughs> I am always calm. I am serene. I have no difficulties. I dislike no one. I love everyone. You know that one? I have such crap. <laughs> <laughs> It's a trap. It's a trap because it's an idealized version of being human that no one, as far as I know, has reached. We're in this mess together. And when we bring heart to some practice like this, we feel ourselves in it together. And that is an, an immeasurable gift. So that's the way we grow. The fourth step is twofold. First, consider in this world um, where you find inspiration, who you find inspiration from. Living or not, a being that provides you with a way to engage with life that you can keep close, that will sustain it and pop in. You know, like I was just, you know, they just came out with a little coin of Harriet Tubman. Well, for whatever reason, Harriet Tubman is like, I don't know why she just sticks with me. I mean, because she's such a remarkable human being. You know, talk about courage and compassion and tenacity. Just amazing, you know? So think of people in your life who might, or beings or whatever. And then the other part of that is um, cultivate a relationship or relationships with living beings who um, actively and honestly support you in your process. Someone or someones who will deeply listen, provide a new way of seeing things, shed light on the light that is already who you are, in concrete and specific circumstances of your life. A teacher, good dharma, spiritual friends, people that you can trust with your thoughts, with your struggles, who will respect you and support you and challenge you to find ways to engage deeply and honestly with that which you seek. So take time to be alone with this, to ponder it, to consider, listen deeply, pay attention, practice kindness and courage and respect, sit sazen, wherever you find yourself. Follow Dogen's instructions. Therefore, you should know that the radiant light everyone has without exception pertains to each and every actual human being, that individual person within whom an individuated life wholly shines. Just ask Yun Men, what do you mean by every person and by radiant light? Yun Men himself asked, what is everybody's radiant light? This question is none other than the radiant light itself because it challenges its subject matter to the hilt. Accordingly, when anyone asks in such a manner, they have their own light. I'm trying to translate this so that I'm not stuck in the he and she business. So what I say is allow your life and your world our world to be oriented in this way by these teachings. See what happens. I want to keep talking about this as a community and integrate it into our practice together over the coming year and beyond. And I'll be taking some time to kind of 
go through aspects of Komyo and give some like more uh, interpretive talks about the section of it. So let's let's do this together, shall we? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.